Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this morning. I'm very happy that you all have joined. Uh, we'll give people about two minutes time to join, so this session will begin at two minutes past the hour. Please bear with me just for that little time. So if, if anyone still wants to grab a cup of coffee, you've got about two minutes left to do that. This session will start at two minutes past the hour to give everybody a chance to dial in. Hello everybody, welcome to this session. I'm very happy to have you all. Um, we will wait just another minute or so to give everybody a chance to dial in. The session will start at two minutes past the full hour. I'm very happy to see that so many people are dialing in and are interested to learn about our new GX series range of thermal ink jet printers. My name is Ushi Balza. I work at Domino in product marketing and I'm very happy to be your host today. Looking at my watch now, we'll just give it another minute and then we'll kick off the meeting. So if you still wanna grab a cup of coffee, you've got one minute to go. And once again, for those of who you who have dialed in early, this is the third time. Welcome to our webinar. I'm very happy to have you all in this session. And we will kick off now. It's great that you're all interested to learn more about the GX series of thermal ink jet printers and how they can support your needs in a modern coding environment. We are very happy to, to introduce this new printer range to you today. My name is Ushi Balsa and I'm happy to be your host today. A few things about this session. You've all been muted on entry, but we would love to hear from you anyhow. So please use the chat for any questions you might have, any comments or send us your feedback. We're happy to have it. At the end of this session, there will be a bit of time to look at some of the questions you have posted. This presentation is being recorded and we will send you the recording afterwards. And the webinar is open to anyone who's interested. So I'm very happy to have lots of people from various countries around the globe in this session. A quick look at what are we going to do in the next 45, 40 to 45 minutes. We are going to introduce Domino to you. We are also going to talk about the portfolio that we are offering and market trends specifically for the thermal inkjet industry. And then we are going to have a closer look at our new thermal inkjet printer range. And at the end, as I've already promised, there's going to be time for questions. About the company. Domino is a global company providing coding and marking equipment to enable you to personalize, customize, code your products. For that, we offer a wide range of technologies from lasers to thermal inkjet, from continuous inkjet printers to print and apply labeling machines. Also, there is a portfolio of digital printing devices. 
Domino has been founded in 1978. We've got just short of 3,000 employees globally at the moment. Our headquarter is based in the UK in Cambridge, and we are a brother group company. Who are we today? Meet the team. You've already, I've already had the pleasure of introducing myself. I'm Ushi Balfa. I work as a product marketing manager for the Inkjet Technologies at Domino. We also have Paul Clark on board, who is the product director for Inkjet, and he's going to take you through the market trends and thermal inkjet specifics. And then Alex Mountis, our product manager for the thermal inkjet technology, is going to speak to you about our new uh, GX thermal inkjet printer range. And now, over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Ushi. Uh, to save the bandwidth, I'll, um, I'll drop the video, video off. Um, hopefully, that'll make it easier for everyone to follow. Good morning uh, or afternoon to everyone, and thank you for joining uh, the session today. I'd like to take a few minutes um, of, of time at the front end of this to provide a little bit of background about our portfolio. Um, talk a little bit about market trends we see, and uh, hopefully that'll set a bit of a backdrop for um, for the work we've done on the GX series. So I know from the the large uh, attendee list we have on the call today, we've got a lot of different industries represented here, and all of you have different process needs uh, requiring different technology solutions. When Domino started out. Um, we only had a single single technology. We we're a CIJ company, and you won't be surprised to hear that over the last 40 years, we've developed an entire solutions portfolio uh, to align with your process needs and your coding needs. In Domino, we call that our product to pallet proposition, and today that encompasses um, four major inkjet technologies, which I look after in Domino, as well as laser marking, thermal transfer and labeling systems as well. So we provide a complete uh, solution in terms of coding equipment. And all of these technologies have a place in delivering uh, the benefits um, for different applications that you may have. As you know, um, I'm sure many of you are aware, we, we, we obviously integrate our coding equipment with production lines, and that ranges from traditional um, print trigger or speed sensor type integration, so very basic stuff, to PLC sort of line level, all the way up to MES middleware and ERP, and even more recently into the cloud. And we developed a lot of experience in our business and capability to integrate our coding solutions. So that's another key part of our business. And lastly, alongside our coding equipment and our integration expertise, uh, we support our customers with a range of services. So this ranges from traditional services. So we've got a, a, a very large number of service engineers who are very highly skilled at providing uh, repair and support um, to financial products, to more forward thinking advanced services. And we'll touch on those a little bit later on in the context of, of industry four. So today's session is very much focused on, on thermal inkjet or TIG, as Ushi has already said. And of all of our coding and marketing technologies, there's definitely a trend towards thermal inkjet. It's clear when you look at the market data, so you can purchase industry reports in, in coding and marketing, and we, we do that on a periodic basis, that there is an increased uh, growth in, in TIG. Um, if you read those reports, you'd see numbers of a little over 7% annual growth in the use of TIG. Um, we believe in Domino that that's under, under calling it. We actually see a much greater growth in TIG, 33% annual growth in recent years. And from our perspective, um, we see that, that continuing. It's worth noting that that's a combination of, of new applications that are enabled by TIG. So this is things that perhaps previously haven't been coded before. But it's also some substitution of other technologies as, as TIG finds, finds application spaces where it really, uh, really is its home. So you might ask, um, what's making TIG so popular? So, um, and as ever, the, the, the answer to that is not a simple, simple one feature. It's a combination of, of characteristics which make TIG um, 
suitable for a broad range of applications. So first and foremost, TIG print quality is, is excellent. And especially if you're uh, printing logos or you're doing 2D codes, which have also seen a big growth in recent years, then TIG is an excellent technology. It's very high contrast and it's high resolution. It's generally fast enough for most applications um, and it supports a broad range of, of ink uh, platforms. So it's, it's capable of, of printing onto porous paper-based material, absorbent material, but it's also capable of printing onto non-porous substrates with solvent inks and things like sort of plastic films or, or rigid, rigid polymers. And Alex will, will expand a little bit on that later on as he talks a little bit more specifically about the GX series and our range of products. TIG is also flexible. It's a highly flexible technology and it's an easy technology to live with. So it's got a very high comfort of use and it's a cost effective solution for a broad range of use cases. So, so technologically, it certainly has its advantages and it has a solid place in, in our portfolio. So TIG uses, usage has been on the rise as we as we kind of look, look backwards, but what about looking into the future? So as we look across our industry and we speak to our customers, uh, many of whom are on, on, on the call today, there are a number of things that we think are still remain very important in selecting a coding technology and, and coding vendor. So high reliability continues to be obviously very important, keeping, keeping production lines running. Having good high quality codes is equally very important and having a strong support partnership when things do stretch us um, is, is equally very important. I'm sure you can all relate to, to that as we reflect on the challenges that we've all faced in the last two, two or three months. But as we look forward, our expectations move on um, and we see an increased focus on things that can make a material impact to production output and efficiency. And there's four areas uh, that we've chosen to focus on that we see, we see emerging in this context. The first is OEE, so overall equipment uh, equipment efficiency or effectiveness, uh, depending on um, which definition you look at. And it's that's already a big focus for, for many of you, I'm sure. Um, and we see that focus increasing. So this builds on the reliability piece, but brings in considerations of, of availability of the equipment, utilization of the equipment, and broader production flow uh, performance con considerations to drive continuous improvement um, in production line output. So it's a bigger, a bigger genre, and we certainly contribute towards that with, with our coding uh, 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 equipment. We also see error reduction as a key theme. To err is human is an old English proverb. I think it was credited to, to Alexander Pope, um, but it means everyone makes mistakes. And to this end, we see a big trend to minimize and, and control and ultimately remove human interactions from production, production line operations and processes. So another big area of focus. Equally, late stage customization and the flexibility that affords uh, is another big trend. So by doing more printing uh, later uh, down the line or later in the production process, there are bigger efficiency benefits to be made with inbound raw materials, as well as the opportunity to, uh, to personalize orders down to smaller quantities. So things that have not been, been possible before with traditional process flows and we see that's particularly pertinent in, in consumer trends at the moment with the desire to get down to a very personalized message to the consumer. And last of the four is, is connectivity and we see that as a really big market trend and industry four technology is certainly key, key enabler to that. So we're going to take a, a, a little bit more time just to explain industry four in, in our context. So the first thing that's probably worth saying about Industry 4 is it's a big topic. And I'm sure you've all sat on presentations which have taken a very academic look at it. Uh, for the purposes of today, we're gonna try and make it um, tangible. Uh, so Industry 4 um, can actually be categorized into nine pillars. You can see those, those pillars on the screen here. And whilst all of those do intersect with Domino in a broader sense, there are four key areas from a coding perspective which we think are really relevant. And those are systems integration, the internet of things, big data and cloud computing. And of course, they're all, all linked uh, intrinsically within this industry 4.0. Um, at a basic level, our coders are, 
are collating more and more data on board from, from sensors that were never connected before. And they're being stored in data storage that was never available on, on, on our equipment before. And this is the raw data that forms the basis for all this advanced capability that we're gonna talk about. So think of this a bit like a, a PC within the printer that has access to lots of digital sensors and now has the capacity to store that information. This data is accessible through advances in uh, the Internet of Things and improved APIs for systems integration. So that enables uh, automation to be easier and quicker than ever before. So think less cables, quicker configuration, certainly less hardcore software development to achieve integration between apps. And as we bring that data together through the integration pathways and we merge it, we create information. And that's where this starts to become really interesting. So let's pick an example. So the data that we're talking about could be an in-count alert on a printer. And, and this could be merged with some information like a calendar um, and some knowledge of the production line layout or the layout within, within your facility. So suddenly we, we, we go from seeing a periodic in-count alert, which in its context is not very interesting, to, to something which starts to tell us a little bit more because we merge in that information from the calendar and the knowledge of the production line starts to tell us, for example, that the printer always runs out of ink during the night shift on a Wednesday on production line, line three. So clearly that, that information now becomes useful. It's no longer data, it's information. And we can take action and it, the action can be quite specific. So we could take action to train the night shift team. Uh, we could decide to bring in a little bit more information to try to understand why the production demands on, on line three are so high on a Wednesday night and why the, the coding equipment is, is running out of ink. We could equally take specific action to add a backup print head with an automated cut in on that line to provide redundancy specifically to cover that eventuality on, on, on the Wednesday night. So you can see you, we're ba basically building up with three or four very basic pieces of, inf of, of data, some information which is really quite useful, provided it's being brought together at the, at the right time. And, and lastly, um, where where this data is being pulled together is is cloud computing and 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 cloud computing really allows us to do a number of things it makes data very accessible it makes information very accessible to us all but it also allows us to collect big data and that creates an environment where everyone can benefit from a much larger population of data you could call this big learning but effectively, that creates uh, a platform for breakthroughs in proactive service and advanced service solutions. And some of those uh, you can already see in, in cloud support products that are available today. And Domino has a number of these. Um, and some of these are not yet with us as, as Industry 4 continues to evolve, new opportunities arise. But hopefully you can kind of see why we're so excited about Industry 4 and, and why we think it's such a big big part of the future of our industry. So how do you get started with industry, with the Industry 4 journey? And, and, and or if you're in on the Industry 4 journey, you know, how do you take the next step in that in that pathway? Well, well, it starts with enablers. And the enablers are new products and, and new technology. And that those new products need to be designed for Industry 4. Uh, they clearly need to meet the needs of today. Um, but they also need to be ready for the demands of, of tomorrow. And, and with that, we would like to, to introduce our GX series range of printers.
Hello and uh, good morning or good afternoon um, from myself as well. Um, I think I'm taking over now. Um, so um, thank you for, for, for joining us. Uh, this is re really exciting time for, uh, uh, for us uh, to introduce this uh, new GX printer. I'll do the same trick as well. I'll uh, turn my camera off to save a little bit of the bandwidth uh, for the rest of the presentation. Um, so as, as you have seen in our teaser video, um, we have highlighted some of the, the value propositions that we identified and we think are important for our next generation product line. Those product drivers have been steering our development process basically from the beginning. And in this short presentation, I would like to discuss uh, with you our new offering uh, in this industry 4.0 environment. First of all, uh, we created a product range that it is easy to integrate uh, with a small footprint, uh, with an optimized option for OEMs, and by offering a variety of communication protocols, which I'll cover a bit more in detail later, uh, the GX series printers are designed to easily and seamlessly integrate with production lines. We are also offering products that are easy to operate. Uh, our new TITS printers come with uh, an easy to use, a feature rich touchscreen and an interface that enables uh, our customers to create and edit labels easily and quickly directly on board the controllers. We have now LEDs on the print heads for simplifying operations for those times when the print heads are far away from the controller. Furthermore, we allowed easy um, remote access to the controllers via a, a web server and remote monitoring via cloud services. Finally, we are offering products that allow our customers to achieve those uh, high quality codes, not, not only for simple bats and date coding, uh, but also for complex code formats, uh, as you've seen earlier in the presentation, based on, the, on those market needs uh, to deliver durable and lasting grade A data matrix codes, uh, fast serialization, and track and trace codes, uh, and even achieving the late state customization Paul referred to. Those drivers uh, became our GX series value propositions for clean, clear coding. So with that in mind, here, here are the photographs. Here's the new uh, GX series product range uh, overview. As you can see from the photographs, uh, it is a modern X generation TITS product uh, range. Uh, it, all controllers now, and we offer global language support, and we run the intuitive quick step three user interface. If I start from the left, uh, the GX150i, which is the smaller of the, de of the devices, um, it's a seven inch touch screen. It is pretty much smaller than the, uh, an iPad. Um, it supports up to two print heads and one encoder input, but it's a very powerful device and very versatile. In the middle, uh, we have the GX350i. Uh, this is the bigger of the devices uh, with a 10 inch uh, touch screen allows uh, our customers to actually work and operate very easily on, on this big screen. It is also IP64 rated, and this is achieved by the um, cable entry system, as you can see at the bottom of the uh, controller. For all those harsh environments um, that you might place your controller. This device takes up to four print heads, and it can take up to two encoder inputs, and it also allows Ethercut option uh, as, a, as an extra. So on the right hand side, we have the, the OEM device. This is specifically designed uh, for uh, integration for PLC cabinet integration. It is very small and very light. Uh, as you see, it doesn't have a screen. Uh, so the uh, access to it is via the web browser uh, user interface. It's very, very light. It's quite impressive to, to, to touch, to, to see it in, in, in real life. And then, of course, it also comes with Ethercut options um, in, in, in this device. But we haven't just updated our controllers, our printers. 
we have uh, looking into update the whole solution and part of that overall solution is the printheads as you can see um, we've redesigned the printhead as well uh, the the print, new printhead the gx printhead is small it's actually smaller even than the low profile uh, g series printhead for those ones who are familiar with the g series the new printheads are robust they are um, great for seamless coding, even for stitched paths. They are flexible. We have top, front, and back connections uh, available, mounting connections available. They are strong. We have now metal latches. And they're easy to use, uh, even with this metal latch or with um, the lever, as you can see in the picture as well, that makes it super easy uh, to operate especially in those situations where we have um, stitch heads up to four stitch heads together then it can be a little bit trickier this is a great solution and as already mentioned we also have the led status signal uh, to make it the operation easier and we are offering more length options um, we have now three meter cable six meter cable 12 and 25 meter cable to pretty much cover all different um, installation requirements. So GX series has been developed with a mindset of total efficiency uh, for the coding and marking market needs. One single GX controller offers installation efficiency uh, and can be used over multiple production lines with these multiple heads. Uh, taking full advantage of the TID characteristics of no servicing and maintenance and making sure we have full hot swap capabilities with our uh, backup and restore functionality. We are also offer flexibility to maximize the prints per cartridges while maintaining the expected domino quality on the code uh, with adjustable uh, DPI settings and our ink saving options. Finally, we take, we're taking advantage of the uh, Industry 4.0 technologies to further improve the efficiency in our solution offering and offering these advanced services that take Domino's thermal inkjet solution beyond the printer. This uh, ad advanced service includes the uh, overall equipment efficiency, automation systems and continuous operation. So these become um, the heart of the advanced services. Domino offers a network of solutions uh, around that to deliver those advanced services of OE automation and continuous operation. We have OE dashboards on the printers themselves with the uh, Quick Step 3, but we also have it on uh, Domino Cloud. We have dashboards for uh, over OE on cloud. Domino Cloud is actually a solution for remote monitoring and diagnostics which provide access to online performance dashboards, amongst other details. Those can be accessed via a, a smartphone or a tablet, or of course a PC. Uh, and then mentioning PC, we do have PC applications as well to complete the um, uh, offering an automation solution. Finally, going back to the, uh, going back to the printer, uh, with the auto swap function, we can achieve those continuous printing, continuous operations as we're enabled to change cartridges while printing without interrupting production. So how is this um, network of uh, application, network of solutions is achieved though? Well, we've made this solution, um, we open it up to connectivity. Uh, it is uh, supports ethernet, uh, with web server and network drives are available. It supports field buses. Uh, for example, I've already mentioned Ethercat, so we can uh, connect to um, a PLC network. It supports Dynamark, our TCP protocol, our own Dynamark, um, our own Domino uh, TCP protocol. And we've enabled external data captures directly onto the controller. And that can take uh, place over a serial port, over TCP, or over USB. We've also have now a, a network time protocol, which means that we can always have the right time on the controller by connecting it to a, a time server. And of course, cloud 
uh, and as already mentioned we have access to the cloud with a variety of devices um, smartphones tablets pcs so those um, networking um, allows us to um, offer error recording and late state customization to 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 uh, to our customers error free interactions has been very important and, and as Paul mentioned earlier in, uh, earlier in the presentation what do, what does all that mean to our customers we we're taking the human out of um, um, of the uh, of the picture in, in a way by not by having direct integration communication to PLC state and now travels to the controller either via a PLC or via the um, a barcode scanner or a checkware directly onto the PC so we're taking the um, human out of the question and automation solutions uh, can offer data uh, into the printer by linking the databases or having label automations uh, as well we also have other other um, um, strategies around uh, reducing errors by having an automatic cartridge identification and configuration. There's no need to do anything. You just put the right cartridges on on the on the printhead. We also implemented ink restriction. So if you have a line that needs to work on a water-based ink or a specific ink, we can we can lock this printhead to only accept a specific ink, avoiding mistakes. And the netco time protocol. Um, we never have to worry about time. We never have to worry about changing the time. Uh, you're always um, uh, having the right time and making the right decision on the on 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 the printer. All that also offers this late state customization. Um, we can modify label elements based on real time conditions. We're now offering Lua scripting, and we can have those high speed re serialization uh, items uh, re serialization with external variable data. And this data can come from all the previous um, mentioned um, uh, options. So um, I've, I've briefly talked about the print range and our uh, print head options. And I also covered what we termed advanced services. However, Domino's thermal inkjet is a complete solution and our total product offering includes, of course, uh, our ink rate as well. Paul mentioned earlier that we offer water and solvent-based uh, inks. Um, black and colors from printing on a variety of substrates but based on specific properties of those inks in our portfolio we see great fit for some specific sectors and applications we have inks the likes of bk651 and 652 or bk129 uh, with exceptional light fastness and high contrast characteristics making those perfect for the life sciences applications. For outer case coding applications where decap um, time and self-life are important factors and we our range includes the BK117, BK630 and all those colors that are required for printing now uh, logos and graphics. Of course the food packaging area uh, where uh, GMP and um, Swiss list compliant and fast dry inks are very important for applications, um, fast applications. Um, we have BK118 and BK652 and a very and a new ink that we are also launching very, very soon. Finally, um, there is the um, industrial and electronics applications where the uh, requirements are around the heat resistance um, or high contrast or UV um, inks are, are important. We also offer uh, inks like PK129 and CL125. So you can see that with our inks, we're, we, we're trying to offer different pri uh, properties to capture those different uh, applications. 
So looking at our total thermal in product offering, for all those benefits I have talked about, it is no surprise that we have seen a, a good feed uh, for, uh, for, our teed up, for our teed solution uh, on variety of applications, both on primary and secondary coding. In particular, within the uh, FMCG sector, we have been very successful in the primary food and pharma applications. Nowadays, consumers probably uh, come across TID codes almost daily, uh, as our codes appear in all sorts of products, like pouches, cartons, uh, snacks, convenience foods, and of course, pharma carton packaging, and even on the blister foils. The high flexibility and efficiency allows us to be particularly successful at secondary coding, of course. And we can print those high quality text and graphics and logos uh, that are required for those applications like the flat packs and shelf ready packaging. Also, combining the advancements in uh, TEDS inks uh, with the overall TEDS benefits, uh, it creates a very appealing offering in the uh, industrial and electronic sector. And especially in the uh, areas of battery printing or uh, LCD marking, and in the area of covert marking as well, uh, with the um, UV inks, for example, where we have seen great success in, in the recent years. Finally, we have the ambition to extend the TIDS catchment area yeah, we, in going into new applications uh, where with targeted, targeted ink releases. Um, and Paul already mentioned maybe some of the TTO applications, for example, but we're just looking to expand this um, and our new printer, uh, new solution with uh, our new inks that we're looking to launch will cover more and more areas. So before concluding, I would like to emphasize uh, that this product uh, development has been from the beginning very customer focused. Our products um, have been developed uh, with a close collaboration uh, with OEM customers. Uh, one of those OEMs uh, is um, a leading food packaging OEM. Uh, we call it FOEM. Uh, and it's been already endorsed as well by this customer. Uh, they have used only one coding technology uh, in a recent uh, exhibition, a major event in, that, in the uh, food packaging industry. And the Domino GX OEM controller was fully integrated into their packaging machinery. And the, the results and the, the, they had exceptional um, positive customer feedback. And there's been a, a high interest from their own subsidiaries, which everyone was very impressed with the uh, overall solution. But not only that, we also had um, uh, a leading pharma OEM uh, involved in the development and the now endorsement of our product range. The POEM, uh, we had four machines with uh, Domino TIDS technology where, where we displayed in the uh, recent event and GX OEM control was integrated into three of them. Uh, and more, more interesting that the GX OEM has displaced competition uh, and now we are the preferred heat supplier and as you can see on the right hand side, I'm not sure how clear it is on a, on a, a webinar. Um, you can see the um, difference on um, a code, um, which was uh, what actually made um, this transition uh, to an, uh, and displacement of our competition uh, very easily for our customer. So with that, I'd like to uh, conclude again with the, uh, the value propositions uh, of our product range. Um, what we're trying to achieve is a clean, clear coding, and we are offering easy to integrate solution, an easy to operate solution, and an easy to network solution, future-proofing uh, our offering for, for many years to come. And with that, I'd like to invite you to um, watch the full uh, product picture video. Now.
Introducing the GX series from Domino, trusted solutions for thermal inkjet marking and coding applications. GX series printing solutions are versatile, easy to integrate, easy to operate, the perfect fit on many printing applications and substrates. Making the GX series suitable not only for simple batch and date coding, but also an ideal solution for complex code formats, check weighing and track and trace applications across pharmaceutical, food, beverage and industrial markets. The GX series printers are designed to easily and seamlessly integrate with production lines. Their small footprints, straightforward cartridge exchange, easy operation and fast data communication make the GX series ideal for all your thermal inkjet printing needs. Effortlessly run the GX150i and GX350i through their easy-to-use, feature-rich touchscreen interface. You can create and edit labels directly on board. The GX OEM completely and seamlessly integrates with production machinery. Simplification of use and low maintenance is at the forefront of the GX series design, making them adaptable to a multitude of setups. The GX series benefit from efficient ink usage using Domino's own market-leading inks, delivering clean, durable coding in graphic quality for high-contrast, lasting, GS1-compliant machine and human-readable codes. Domino's GX series of printers' exceptional reliability, simplicity and adaptability ensure production lines keep running and running and running. Domino Thermal Inkjet. Clean, clear coding. This so I think that concludes that presentation and, and thank you from, from my part and I think Ushi is going to take control now. <laughs> I already have. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for listening in. Um, I hope we've got you hooked a bit. And there are some questions. Alex, I would like to give you a breather and direct the first one at Paul. Paul, um, in the current situation with all the disrupt disruption we're facing, do you think that kids will still remain to grow and will still be in a product range that's interesting for con consumers to use? Hi, Yushi. Uh, th th thanks for the question. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I guess uh, the last two or three months have been um, probably some of the more challenging months that we've all known in in our industry and i think you know i'm, th I'm sure everyone on 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 the line will will agree with that you know we regardless of kind of what industry you're in um you might have seen you know massive sways in demand and you know we've obviously seen seen that in domino i guess what we covered throughout the, the the presentation i suppose gave you an idea of the scope of of, of how thermal inkjet can be used and i think I think that serves serves it very well in terms of you know how we think about its durability to to, to volatility in in usage. So for sure, I think we we, we do see uh, thermal inkjet continuing to grow aggressively. It might not uh, this year be be at the same trajectory as it has been for obvious reasons, but for sure we see we see new applications uh, emerging through through these challenges, and one in particular. Um, obviously, we, we've talked a little bit about life sciences and pharma, and you know, no, no, I, I would imagine if you're working within those supply chains, the, the, the pressures over the last few few months have been incredible. So, and that's obviously seen seen increased demand uh, for, for ourselves as well. So, so I'd say yes. Um, to, to, to summarise, I think we do see it continuing to grow, and and it's very well positioned to do that. Obviously, with a new with a new product like GX series. Thank you. Um, and then, now, as you say, you do see a demand growing. Yes, and there's a question for that. Um, is the product already available? And um, how can I get more specific information for it? There's been very specific questions about pricing and models and all these things. Alex, is it available? And how can our customers get information? So, um, yes, uh, the product is available. as. Um, as you may or may not, we've been uh, trying to implement uh, um, a phased launch approach. Um, so we, we, we started in specific regions of the world and we're um, uh, rolling it out uh, across the globe now. Um, the product is fully available in, in, in the whole of Asia market and is now available in Europe as well. 
um, within the next 30 days it will be available as well through our distribution network um, from the beginning of July and and then very soon after that um, and in the beginning of the fall uh, we are looking into uh, a, introducing the product properly into the US market, North American market as well. Um, this coincides with the, uh, a big exhibition, for example, in, in, in the US, the EPAC Expo. Um, so we've, we've been trying to um, uh, work around the big events in the calendar in our, in our industry, in our, in our market. Um, we've been disrupted as well uh, with the coronavirus. However, that hasn't stopped us and we've launched the product and it is available in, in those regions, as I've mentioned, yeah? It is currently available. If you need more information um, for the second part of your question, Lucy, um, please get in touch with um, uh, with your local offices, uh, with your local salespeople. Um, they are already have enough uh, information or more than enough probably um, to share and if there is specific questions um, they, they'll always come back to us or, but uh, I think all our offices where the product is launched are, are prepared and ready to take uh, questions and orders. Thank you and also um, if you're new to Domino and haven't had any contact yet please be sure that when we send you the recording to allow us to contact you again and we will be back with more information and we'll be happy to talk to you about our offering, not only for Thermal Inkjet, but for the other technologies as well, if you are interested. So just make sure to allow us to contact you if you haven't been in touch with us before. Um, now there's been another question on serialization. Um, can we do serialization? What kind, what code sizes can we do? I guess that refers to the data matrix code content. We can do. We can. Um, we can. We can do. But the limitations are with the technology, where with one he uh, head we can have up to 12.7 um, uh, millimeters. So, but we're proven to be able to do very um, high quality codes, 2D codes. Um, we can do um, um, the Russian um, uh, serialization um, uh, requirements. Um, so we we are also implemented specific uh, algorithms uh, that allow us to uh, do great A codes even with those high um, high data codes. Um, so the the code doesn't bleed and becomes uh, too difficult to read from um, machines machine readable codes. So not only we can um, not, not only we can print in in those specific areas, but we've developed algorithms uh, um, which we can. Um, um, using the controllers to, to print um, consistently grade A codes. So I think it's, it's fair to say that yes, we can serialize. Yes, we can print um, large content data matrix codes. The GX OEM printer and the GX OEM, uh, the GX series range have been developed with a pharma customer and you can be sure that um, they were very keen on having grade A readable serialization uh, codes and data matrix codes. Um, and I guess that also answers the question about variable printing. Yes, uh, and, and that's again, it's in the heart of what we, we are trying to do. And uh, we want to um, place our printer uh, towards the end, as, as Paul mentioned as well uh, earlier, uh, to achieve those late state customization. Uh, at the, as you, you've seen, hopefully from the presentation, it's open to different protocols and different communications um, that allow um, variable data to come into the printer onto a label uh, very late in the process just before being uh, coded onto the product and Ethernet for example, Ethercat for example, yeah, and then the field bus allows very fast uh, data transfer uh, and we, we can achieve those late state customization with variable data that we will come either from um, a PLC um, or even from an ERP type of system, yeah. So we walk through the range from 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 the PLCs to the ERPs, basically. Um, so yes, is the answer again. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's lots of questions, so we will come back on those we can't answer in this session. There's one that's very easy to answer: um, Is the Dynamoc protocol enabled on the GX series? Yes, it is. Um, and now let me have a look. Quick step three interface. That's another one we might want to answer in this session, kind of as a wrap up. Um, what benefits does that bring? What, what does that mean? 
Um, quick step. Th uh, quick step is uh, the Domino solution uh, for you, uh, user experience, user uh, interface, effectively. Um, so for those who are not very familiar, it also uh, is available on our other X product range. For, for example, the AX and the CIJ side, and it, it will be the base of our uh, future products uh, overall. Uh, the reason for that is. Um, it, Domino has invested and has put a huge amount of effort to creating a user experience that's um, uh, really helpful for our customers. We um, we empathize. Uh, there's a huge process behind it, so we, we we empathize with our users. We we learn from how they do things and what's important to them when they use our printers. Um, so we, we defined that as, as a problem and we solved it. Uh, effect. We generated idea, we minimized uh, the amount of clicks and where things are, and we've made it really intuitive. Um, uh, and, and it has already been tested and validated effectively uh, as a very successful product um, solution, not product per se, but uh, a solution for our printers. Um, and I think the key here is how intuitive it is intuitive uh, it is and and that we've minimized the amount of efforts in, in order to create a label and, or use the printer i can i can only emphasize that from all that i've heard from people who have worked with the kit um, they've all said that it's very very easy to use so on that note i want to thank you alex and paul Cheers. for being with us with us and introducing us to the dx series I want to thank you all for being our guests today. I do hope we've got you interested. I do hope to hear back from you all. Um, all the questions that you have posted will be answered and we will be back with the recording. Have a great day, everybody, and um, see you soon. Goodbye.